it's a common condition throughout the world, and indeed the case in Australia, that populations in our major cities have been increasing. There are various urban patterns that have followed or even preempted this to coordinate relationships around population density and open space. And particularly, they aim to coordinate the community infrastructure that is required to ensure a livable environment. Schools are seen as key pieces of this infrastructure equation and have continued to evolve as densification of city areas means that both schools and their associated facilities are more frequently leveraged for public use. This research looks specifically at the relationship that schools have to their local communities and aims to identify the benefits of providing facilities as part of school infrastructure that complement public assets, as well as discussing challenges faced with the delivery of these assets within ongoing trends of urbanisation. Uh, the diverse choice of schooling options available today has been formed from what was quite a different setting throughout Australia during the 19th and earliest parts of the 20th century, where once there was a clear separation between home and school life, the, the rise of comprehensive schools in the 60s and 70s added a focus on geographically defined districts with goals of equal opportunity, collective socialisation and connection with the community. Uh, policy development that followed this included the dezoning of geographically constrained schools uh, to cater for market selection, and government schools have continued to be affected by these changes, where community around schools means less and less about proximity of families to the campus. Uh, this historic context is relevant as both a precedent to how schools and their communities have interacted, but it also begins to describe the close link between school development and government policy. Sydney, like other Australian capital cities, is in a current state of transformation, uh, led by strate strategic planning visions that express the need to reshape the city environment with a focus on infrastructure and collaboration. Uh, established middle and inner city areas are contested between the ongoing demand between housing, uh, but they are also being asked to provide uh, social and community assets required to make cities livable. In New South Wales, more than 80% of student growth is expected to occur within metropolitan Sydney, and schools within the city area face the combined pressure of growing enrolments and scarcity of land supply. Acknowledgement of this issue has led to changes in the physical composition of planned schools, both in the arrangement of the classroom and teaching spaces, such as vertical schools, uh, but also non-teaching spaces, such as open and play space. An example of uh, this acknowledgement is the School Asset Strategic Plan, uh, recently announced by the New South Wales Government. Uh, this plan proposes up to 2031, uh, a near doubling of school enrolment numbers, while also reducing spatial sizes by half. So in effect, a quadrupling of student density. Uh, while recommendations uh, in the plan uh, acknowledge the requirement to rethink the architecture of the school itself, uh, understanding of the impacts to both programmed and non-programmed spaces uh, is absent. So that is, uh, what are the effects on, on the school and the community environments as a result of these density changes? Uh, such quantitative school planning controls uh, can be useful for achieving a streamlined approach to upgrading educational facilities. Uh, and also in New South Wales, there is the state environmental uh, planning policy for education and childcare facilities. Uh, and here the aim is to enable a less cumbersome pathway to establish facilities within schools. Uh, however, there is concern that these planning instruments can't properly account for the provision of open space and density. Uh, and while there's broad consensus that schools well integrated into their communities and with assets av available for education and community use are beneficial to all, literature on the design and planning of open space and, and green space is far less available uh, than for buildings and other uses with established spatial standards. Uh, this availability of information precedes questions around the necessary quantity and quality of open space needed for a school. Um, it also precedes how the school or community might leverage existing open space within the local area and how the community might benefit from open space provided by the school. While both in schools and within the community, studies show that access to green space is important for the development of young children. Uh, it provides benefits to not only physical health, but also mental development and enhanced academic outcomes. Uh, and this is also true for the benefits to communities. As these benefits are being realised, there are, there are shifts occurring within the planning system, um, such as the forthcoming New South Wales design and place planning policy, another planning policy. 
uh, which aims to bring context to the front uh, in respect to open space planning. Um, but it's yet unknown if these schools will be included in this. Uh, and New South Wales also utilises a tool set called the Educational Facilities Standards and Guidelines uh, for the design of schools. Uh, and here, basic minimum dimensions for classrooms and other things such as uh, descriptions of open space are included. Uh, but an understanding of how these dimensions has been, uh, has been established or the quality of the open spaces is, is less detailed. And similarly, uh, objectives around landscape and integration with community are listed, but uh, these relate to the physical context rather than the societal one. Um, agreeing on the right open amount of open space, though, uh, is a challenge. Uh, and, but it, is, it seems to be common opinion that it, it bigger is not always better where the, the correlation between larger schools and lower student, out, um, student outcomes is made. Uh, there are arguments that the overall amount of pace, play space matters less than the, phys the uh, actual time available for play, uh, and that the programming and design of the space impacts physical activity in certain cases more than the quantity of open space. Uh, these findings direct an outcome towards consolidated and purposeful, purposeful outdoor environments uh, where physical side is balanced uh, balanced with opportunity and quality. Uh, overarching this debate about the provision of open space facilities is a continued theme that they are both beneficial to the student and the community. Uh, education facilities and their supply of playing fields, um, uh, performing arts spaces and libraries are just some of the assets that are recognised that can provide positive outcomes within a community. Uh, and schools are notable here for their ability to engage people of diverse ages and backgrounds, uh, and also through their role as established education providers, forming a position of trust within community groups. Uh, and the concept of, of school as a community hub has been formed uh, throughout varying degrees of school community service sharing discussions, uh, but is also used within a context, but is often used within a context of infrastructure delivery uh, efficiencies. Uh, this is the suggestion that overlapping or dual purpose facilities uh, can do more with the resources provided. Uh, in the case of open space, uh, schools have been recognised to have the potential to act as a green hub, providing the, the opportunities for physical activity and other open space to be used by the broader community. And in some cases, schools provide the majority of green open space for their communities. Uh, research here notes that this is not simply a case of adding a playing field and anticipating successful in community engagement. Rather, it shows successful outcomes within the community uh, rely upon early formed partnerships as part of the planning process and importantly require schools that are designed to be open and connected to their physical neighbourhood. Our governments have acknowledged these issues and uh, often resulting in partnership programs uh, and the joint use of facilities and both New South Wales and Victoria have published policy guidelines that help schools and local governments uh, move beyond simple co-location of assets and to develop key community hubs. Uh, but these guides relied on the participation at the initial planning or well, upgrade of a school phase, um, and also the ongoing involvement through uh, local networks of, of social support. How to adequately present, represent the community in some cases, or even encourage participation still remains a challenge. Uh, the inclusion of community stakeholders in the conversation for the planning of shared facilities uh, is, is more and more commonly seen as a benefit to achieving positive outcomes, uh, and continued knowledge and success sharing combined with adequate resourcing to engage communities from both the government and the school will likely be part uh, in the formation of these hubs. Uh, this leads us to ask how we might expect to see positive results in the future here. Uh, in respect to the current formula of unpacking a school into spatial compartments, this has a tendency to be quite short-sighted in relation to uh, the possible benefits for the student in the community. Uh, holistic planning for schools and community uh, around open spaces is essential to ensure uh, access to the benefits it provides. Policies around open space, education, shared use uh, continue to be developed and currently include the aim of forming better partnerships between schools and their communities uh, and improving outcomes for both. As policy continues to evolve, uh, cooperative models of engagement with all users by policymakers uh, has the potential to identify gaps and shortcomings in open space provision. While integrated school planning and innovative approaches to partnership models may promote learning spaces uh, that are adaptable and can support a range of activities for multiple users, uh, ongoing evaluation of these tools and policy developments should be undertaken to identify positive outcomes for students and their communities.